Hello there, my name is Gwen McKee and I'm a nurse practitioner student with the United States University. How are you? Good. And can you verify for me please your initials and date of birth? MJS. And so I'd 10, like... 10-6-1970. Oh, Thank you. <laughs> sorry for interrupting. And so I'd like to do an examination of your respiratory system today, but before I begin, uh, I'd like to take a video and upload it to YouTube as unlisted for my instructors to grade. Do I have your permission? Sure. Okay. And so first I'm going to go ahead and clean my hands, and while I do that, are you having any pain today? No, I'm not. Okay, wonderful. And so I'm beginning by inspecting his chest, and I'm looking anteriorly, and I'm also looking posteriorly, and I'm noticing that he's not in any respiratory distress, but his respirations are even and unlabored. He has a respiratory rate for the sake of this video of 16. And were this in clinic, I'd have him remove uh, his top, but for, for modesty, he'll leave it on for the video. And then I'm also noticing that he has a symmetric chest rise. He has no deformities. There's no pectus excavatum or pectus um, carinatum. And also, uh, he doesn't have flail chest. And I'm noticing also that his trachea is midline and not deviated, as you might see with a pneumothorax. And I'm also noticing that he does not have any accessory muscle use. He does not have any diaphragmatic breathing. And uh, he doesn't have any retractions either. And those are all normal findings. And I'm also noticing that he has no clubbing of his fingers or his toes. He ha uh, that would indicate COPD or emphysema. He also doesn't have any cyanosis of the lips, the fingers, or toes, which would indicate hypoxia. And those also are normal findings. And so uh, I'm also noticing that he has an uh, AP ratio of 1 to 2, and that is normal as well. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, um, I'm going to palpate now for tactile fremitus. And so uh, I'm going to have you say 99 when I place my hands on you, okay? And then I'm just feeling here for symmetric vibrations. So go ahead and say 99. 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99. And then go ahead and lift your right arm. Go ahead. 99. Perfect. And so here anteriorly, <coughs> his uh, tactile fremitus is uh, symmetric and expected in uh, vibration intensity. So go ahead and say 99 again as I place my hands upon you. 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99. Great. And again, the tactile fermitus is expected and symmetric. And then I'm going to go ahead and um, palpate for uh, Costal chondral tenderness here. And are you feeling any tenderness? Nope. All right, and that is a normal finding. And then I'm gonna go ahead and palpate for respiratory excursion. And so you can just breathe normally. And I'm feeling for the costal uh, margin here, the 10th rib. And I'm placing my fingers with a little bit of um, skin in between. And then I'll have you just take a couple of deep breaths in and out for me. And then I'm noticing that I can feel symmetry uh, in the rise of my hands with his inspiration and expiration. And that's a normal finding. And I'm going to go ahead and do that in the back as well. All right, so the costal margin here, level of the 10th rib, fingers together. And go ahead and take a deep breath in. Deep breath in. Great and out. And I'm noticing that my hands are symmetrically rising uh, with his inspiration and expiration, and those are normal findings. And then after now that I've uh, palpated, I'm going to go ahead and move on to percussion. And I'm going to do this posteriorly and anteriorly. And I'm going to do it in a symmetric ladder fashion. And I'm comparing uh, the front to the back and also left to right. And I'm, I'm looking to hear, I'm listening for resonance, and uh, I don't want to hear any dullness. And I'm going to percuss uh, intercostally, and I'll be using my middle fingers of my dominant and non-dominant hand. 
and I'm going to tap briskly the distal interphalangeal joint of my non-dominant uh, uh, middle third finger here. Okay, so just beginning here in the patient's uh, right apices. I'm hearing resonance, and I'm avoiding uh, percussing over the scapula. Obviously, that would be a dull sound. Percussing in all lung fields. All right, and now to the bases of the lungs and along the lateral lobes. And while I'm here posteriorly, I'm going to percuss for diaphragmatic excursion. And so I'll be asking you to exhale and inhale and uh, also hold your breath, okay? So go ahead and let all of your air out. And then I'm percussing down, go ahead and hold it until I find the level of his diaphragm. And then I would mark here with my skin friendly uh, pen or pencil, you can breathe. And, um, sorry, as he lets his air out, uh, that would be the upper portion of his diaphragm. And then when he inhales, go ahead and inhale and hold it. And I'm percussing down again and go ahead and hold your breath there. And now the diaphragm will be more inferior than it was and I'm marking here. So now I have my two marks and uh, they should be between, thank you, three and five and a half centimeters uh, for the diaphragmatic excursion and, and that is a normal measurement. And I would also do it on the right hand side uh, if I were in clinic. And then I'm gonna go ahead and percuss beginning in his um, right apice here and I'm listening for resonance, which he has, and there's no dullness, intercostally. And you can just breathe normally for this. All right, and then also listening on the lateral left here. and then the lateral right. And then also in the right middle lobe. And there's only resonance and that is a normal finding. And next I'm gonna go ahead and move on to auscultation of the lung fields. And I can begin here anteriorly. And I'm listening for any adventitious sounds. So I'm not wanting to hear any crackles or uh, coarse lung sounds, ronchi or rails, crackles fine or coarse, <clears throat> and I also don't want to hear any wheezes. So I'm going to place my stethoscope on you, and then you'll take a deep breath in and deep breath out uh, for each time that I place my stethoscope, okay? So it's going to be a little faster and deeper than normal. And I'm listening with the diaphragm here. Go ahead. Great. All right, and then I'm just starting to listen in the left lateral. How you doing? Hyperventilating. You can go more slowly if you need to. Go ahead and lift your right arm there. I'm going to listen under the axilla and mid-axillary line. Go ahead and take a deep breath. And out. Perfect. And I don't appreciate any adventitious sounds. 
there's no bronchi or rails. Of course, you're fine crackles or wheezing. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing. You'll have a lot of deep breathing here. <laughs> I apologize. Beginning in the right apice, apex. Good. Listening in a ladder-like fashion. And I'm comparing the symmetry here. And all these long sounds are clear. And now listening in the bases. Wonderful. And I do not appreciate any adventitious sounds. So we're going to do that again. And I'm going to have you say 99. And I'm going to listen on the posterior and anterior. And what I'm listening for is a muffled sound as he says 99. I don't want to hear any clear verbal or phonation of 99 uh, in the stethoscope because that would be an indication of consolidation, um, and possibly something like pneumonia. Okay? So. As I place my stethoscope, you're going to say 99, okay? 99, And again under your arm. 99. Great, so this is all muffled and this is a normal finding. And again, last time here. 99. Okay, wonderful. And so that is negative for uh, bronchophony, and that's a normal finding. Thank you.